Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will start the discussion of the extensor compartment of your forearm. Let's begin with talking about the muscles in your extensor compartment. So there are superficial muscles in your extensor compartment and there are deep muscles. So today we'll study about the origin, insertion, nerve supply and actions of these superficial and deep muscles of your extensor compartment. Let's begin with the superficial. There are about seven superficial muscles on the back of your forearm, beginning with the anconius. And then we have the brachioradialis. And after this, the story gets a little complicated because we have all the longest and bravest tendons. So let's begin with the extensor carpi radialis longus. It's on the radial side and it is long. If there is a extensor carpi radialis longus, then there should be by default an extensor carpi radialis brevis. Obviously a small one, long means big and brevis means short. So there has to be a brevis. And since there is a radialis, there should be an extensor carpi ulnaris as well. Apart from this, the superficial muscles include, since there is in the front of our forearm, we have the digitorum muscles. Over here, there has to be a digitorum as well. However, there is no superficial or deep digitorum. There is only one digitorum in your extensor compartment, thankfully. And finally, the little finger says, kindly give me a tendon as well. So there is an extensor digiti minimi. So these are the names of the superficial muscle of your arm. Now let's talk about the origins and insertion of these muscles. Let's talk about the anconius first. If you guys remember that there was a humerus bone, the lower end of the humerus. The lower end of your humerus basically had a, let's suppose this is lateral side, there was a supracondylar ridge. This is the supracondylar ridge and right below the supracondylar ridge is the lateral epicondyle. Most of your origins will be from this area of the superficial muscles. So first muscle which is the anconius is originating from the posterior part of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is inserted into the lateral aspect of the olecranon process of ulna. Moving on we have the brachioradialis. The brachioradialis is coming from the if this is the supracondylar ridge it is divided into three parts. Suppose this is the supracondylar ridge one two and three. There is the upper two-third of the supracondylar ridge and a lower one-third of the supracondylar ridge. From the upper two-thirds of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the lower end of the humerus is originating the brachioradialis. And from the lower third is the extensor carpi radialis longus. The brachioradialis is then inserted into the uh, distal part of the radius bone. While the extensor carpi radialis longus uh, that is originating from the lower one-third of the surface of the lateral supracondylar ridge. Now this is being inserted into the base of the second, this is one, second base of the second metacarpal posteriorly because this is the anterior side. It is being inserted right here, base of the second met metacarpal bone. And after this, all the origins of the rest of the muscles is from the common extensor origin or the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So the extensor carpi radialis brevis, since this is being inserted in second, this has to be inserted close by and it should be also in the base of a metacarpal bone. So the closest is the third metacarpal bone. So base of third metacarpal is the insertion of the extensor carpi radialis brevis. The extensor carpi ulnaris has to be inserted in the base of this metacarpal that is the most medial, which is the fifth metacarpal bone. This is the fifth metacarpal bone. So now we know extensor carpi radialis longus, then brevis, and the extensor carpi ulnaris. And finally, the digitorum and the digiti minimi, originating from lateral epicondyle common extensor origin. These are being inserted in the extensor expansions. And these are basically the deep fascia of the hand is modified in your fingers, your digits, to become the extensor expansion or dorsal digital expansion. And this we will discuss in more detail later. 
So the extensor digitorum is being inserted in the digits to second, third, fourth, fifth digits, dorsal digital expansion. While the extensor digiti minimi is being inserted in the extensor expansion of your fifth digit. All right. Now, what about the nerve supply of these muscles? The nerve supply is simple. These three are being supplied by the radial nerve. The first three are supplied by the radial nerve and the rest of them are also from radial nerve but the deep branch of it deep branch of radial nerve now let's talk about the actions pretty simple the anconius is involved in extending the elbow joint the brachioradialis is a flexor a weak flexor of your uh, elbow joint the extensor carpi radialis longus and the bravus both of them are basically going to extend your wrist joint along with its abduction and why abduction because radialis since it is being attached in the radial side of your hand it is obviously going to cause your hand to move away from the body so it causes wrist abduction and wrist extension the extensor carpal laris complete opposite it is going to cause adduction because you have to move it near the ulnar border and it produces extension and adduction the digi extensor digitorum basically causes an extension of your digits. And finally, the digiti minimi extends your little finger. So that's all you need to know about the superficial muscles of your hand. In the next video, we will talk about the deep muscles. Thank you so much for watching.